Deep beneath the mountain. We'll add custom ore generation to Minecraft 193. Alright, we found some back in July once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding custom ore generation for our ores. This will include, by the way, if we take a look, the opal ore, the deep state opal ore, as well as the netherrack and the endstone opal ores as well. Now for this, the previous two tutorials are actually required, so the data gen as well as the tree generation tutorial, at least some of it because we will need the mod configured feature setup as well as the mod place feature setup. It just is what it is. You can, of course, find the completed code in the description below in the GitHub repository. Now, for our configured features, we need three new resource keys. The first one is going to be the overworld underscore black underscore opal underscore or underscore key. And we'll call this the black underscore opal underscore or. Then we have another one for the end. So this is end black opal or key. And this is going to be the end underscore black opal or. There we go, and the last one is the nether rack, or the nether, let's just say nether, nether underscore black underscore opal underscore or underscore key, let's go. And then this is nether underscore black underscore opal underscore or, let's go. So we now have three resource keys of configured feature for our three different spawns, let's say. And the first thing we need in the bootstrap method is actually rule tests. So I will type the first one out and then I will explain. So a rule test, right, this is stone replaceables, there you go. And this is equal to a new tag match test. And we're going to pass in the block tags dot stone or replaceables there you go and we need to duplicate this four times because we also need deep slate replaceables and we also need the netherrack replaceables and we also need the end stone replaceables there we go so the second one is just deep slate or replaceables easy enough the netherrack is actually going to be a block match test instead and this is going to use blocks start netherrack there we go and then the end one is also a block match test, block match test, not block math test. And that is a block start end underscore stone. There we go. So now we have our rule tests. Now, what do these rule tests mean? Well, they are needed in order to know, okay, I can replace these particular blocks with our custom ores, right? I can replace the stone ore replaceables, right? All of the blocks that are in this tag, I can replace with the black opal ore. Same thing with the deep slate ore replaceables. I can replace all of those blocks with the deep deep slate, black opal ore, and so on and so forth. That is the general idea of the rule tests. Now, specifically for the overworld, because we have two different, well, replaceables and two different rule tests that we need, we need to make a list. So we're going to make a list of type or configuration dot target block state. This will be the overworld black opal ores. And this is going to be equal to a list dot of, and it's going to be of or configuration dot target passing in the stone replaceables and then passing in the block state that it can be replaced with. So blocks, mod blocks dot black opal or dot get dot get default block state. Let me just format this a little bit differently. There we go. And then after the second closing parentheses, we want a comma and we want another or configuration dot target, this time passing in the deep slate replaceables and then passing in mod blocks dot deep slate black opal or dot get dot get default state. So this list is quite important for the overworld ones. And now we can register our stuff. So now we can just use the register method, passing in the context and then our key. Let's start with the overworld black opal or key. Then we want to say feature dot or because of course we're making a new or feature, right? Should be self-explanatory in this case. And then new or configuration, passing in the overworld black opal ores and then passing in a number, right? So this is an integer and this decides how big the vein sizes. I'm unsure if this is like the average vein size or the max vein size or something like that, but this is basically the vein size. When it comes to numbers, as always, I highly recommend just playing around with this a little bit and seeing what sticks and what you're like, okay, this is a good amount of ores spawning in the world. Then when it comes to the netherrack stuff and the end stuff, let's start with the end stuff. So this is going to be, once again, the register method passing in the context and the end black opal or key here. This is still a feature dot or beautiful. And then still a new or configuration. Then passing in the endstone replaceables as the first parameter. Then mod blocks dot end blackstone opal ore dot get dot get default state. And then the, you know, whatever number you want. I'm just going to reformat this a little bit. There you go. So you can see instead of passing in the list, we're just passing in the rule test. And then what can be replaced by 
whatever rule test we put in. And I'm also using nine over here just so that our veins are big enough. If you want some vanilla numbers, you can always go to the or features class, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. This should be the one. Yes. And you will find the yeah, there you go. So you'll find that right here. These this is the number, right? This is the this is the vein size, right? And you can see, for example, or coal has 17, right? Iron has nine, uh, small iron has four and so on and so forth. So you can get the a rough idea of the numbers right here. This F over here is discard chance on air exposure, basically meaning that 50% of the time, if a diamond ore block spawns and it is exposed to air on any of its sides, then it has a 50% chance of discarding that block. That is basically what the number over here is. Right, so let's just duplicate this and then change this to the nether black opal ore key, then the nether replaceables, and this is then the nether rag black opal ore, and that should be that. So now we have our three configured features registered. We now need a helper class. So in the world gen package, we're going to make a new class called mod or placement. Now, this is not strictly necessary. However, it is kind of nice. And we're going to basically steal this from the or placed, I believe, right? Or placed or placements or placements. Yes, indeed. There you go. And this is the or placements. And it's these three methods over here. Now, we could, you know, make them public ourselves, but it, there really is no need for this. We're just going to copy them over. We're going to use them like this, and that's going to be fine. And then we can proceed in the mod placed features class. So right here, what we need is, well, once again, right, three resource keys. And we're going to start with the black underscore opal underscore placed key this time. There you go. And this is going to be the black underscore opal placed. And then we have the end black opal placed indeed. And then we have the same thing here End black opal opal place. Don't forget to change the names in the create key method. This is extremely important. Otherwise, you will get an error. And there you go. And then the last one here is the nether black opal placed. Beautiful. So let's start with once again, the register method passing in the context. The second parameter is the key as always black opal placed key. Absolutely. Then we're using the configured features holder getter right here to get the configured feature that we've just made, right? So this would be the the overworld black opals key over here, right? So this one, we're using the configured features dot get or throw, and we're passing in mod configured features dot overworld black opal or key. There we go. After the first closing parentheses, we're using mod or placement dot, and we're using the common or placement. Then the a number, this is an integer, this is 16. In this case, this is the veins per chunk. So this would be veins per chunk. So while we had before the rough estimation of the vein size right here, right? So this is the vein size. This is going to be how many veins per chunk are going to spawn. And then we have a height range placement here in this case, and we can either choose an off so we can make a custom height provider, or we choose triangle or uniform. We're going to choose uniform, and then you need vertical anchors. I will explain those in just a moment. We're going to choose the vertical anchor absolute, and we're going to say minus 80. And the other one is going to be a vertical anchor of absolute and plus 80, or just 80 in this case. So what is, first of all, let's start at the very beginning here, here, right? What is the height range placement? So you have, you can choose between uniform and triangle. The general idea is that the vertical anchors give you the Y levels. So the first one is going to be the bottom Y level and the second one is going to be the top Y level. So this is going to be Y level minus 90, minus 80 and Y level plus 80. And in between there, there is going to be a uniform distribution. So in each Y level, it is equally likely that a black opal or vein spawns. If you were to use triangle, then the exact middle between these two Y levels would be the highest probability and the actual Y levels themselves would be the lowest. So it's basically just forming a triangle for a distribution. That is all that there is to it. When it comes to the vertical anchors, there's something interesting as well. The absolute literally is just, this is literally just Y level minus 80. Now, this is not actually a Y level that exists in the world, but you can still use it. So this is just an abstraction to know, okay, where would you place this? So you, so this would be almost the same as this one, right? Minus 60, minus 64. So it doesn't really make any difference if you do this or the other one. So you can also choose minus 64. That's totally fine for absolute. Now there's two other ones and that is above bottom. This basically is if you do above bottom zero, this is now minus 64 because above bottom basically starts at the lowest Y level, which is minus 64. And if you then put in 64, this would now be Y level zero. It's just addition and subtraction. So nothing crazy. And then you also have below top, which in this case 
Zero here would be 320. I believe that's the world height at this point. It changes so often, so I'm not even 100% sure, but I think it is. So we have 320, and if we were to do minus 320, now we would once again be at Y level zero. So shouldn't be anything crazy to understand over here. And let's just keep this at a minus 64, 80. That's going to be okay. And then we can just duplicate this two times, and we can change this to the nether black opal ore. Oh, there is actually... Uh, there's a tiny bit of a typo over here. Let's go. There you go. And then we have the end black opal place key as well. We want to change this over here to the nether one. So this is going to be mod configured features dot nether. And then this is mod configured features and black opal or and that is it. Now we can also change the common placement right here, right? Like how often is this placed? Where is this placed? We want to keep it like this just so that we're sure that this spawns. When you're actually making your mod and you're publishing it, I highly do recommend changing those numbers to make it, well, not as, as crazy as it might be. But overall, that is pretty much all that we need. So... Just change to run data over here. Let's run it. And in theory, we should get no errors and two new JSON files. Uh, actually, six new JSON files should cre get created in the world gen folder right here. So let's just await this and see if everything is going to work. There we go. So once again, this is the OK error right here, right? Failed. But however, we have all providers took however many milliseconds, which, like I've always said, is totally fine. So now we have black opal ore and black opal ore, nether black opal ore. And we can take a look at this, right? So we can see block match tests with Minecraft netherrack. This all seems absolutely correct and exactly what we need. Now, of course, what we still need is in the resources data tutorial mod forge, we still need to add biomodifiers. This is very important. So this is going to be overworld black opal there we go and this is not vegetable decoration but underground underscore ores and is this not ever any place but black underscore opal underscore placed making sure that the name over here matches the name of the place feature and then in this case we're just choosing is underscore overworld because we want to spawn this in the entire overworld Let's just duplicate this by dragging it into the same folder while holding control and this is then going to be the let's do the end black opal first and this is going to be the end underscore black opal placed yes still this one however this one is actually now not hashtag is overworld but hashtag is end there you go and then we can do the same thing just copying the overworld one once again and this is the nether there you go and then can you expect what this is going to be? Yes, nether underscore black opal placed. Once again, making sure that this is named correctly. And this is now, of course, hashtag is underscore nether. There we go. And now this should all be done. So let's join into the game, make a new world and see if our ores are all present. All right, final steps in Minecraft. So let's just see. Let's descend into the depths below and let's actually take a look at whether or not we can find some of our ores. And there we go. We already have it. So this is our deep slate black opal ore. Pretty cool right here. And, you know, they're going to spawn all throughout. So you can roughly see right now what the general rarity of them is, right? So it's not too crazy but it is pretty awesome to see. So let's then take a look at whether or not it's also in the nether. Well, 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 we found ourselves in the nether right here, and this is, of course, going to be a little more, well, I wouldn't say hidden, but, of course, it doesn't have that many places to generate now. Over, Of course, we already have it right here, so we can see it definitely did spawn. So that is pretty awesome. So one last thing. Let's take a look at the end. All right, so you can immediately see, because of course no other ores spawn in the end, that we have our ores right here. So this is absolutely freaking awesome. And yeah, our ore generation working as intended. Right, that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.